There's a light in the window, a table spread with splendor. Someone standing by the open door. I can see that crystal river, and it must be near forever. Cause I've never been this homesick before. See the bright light shine, it's just about home time. right here in a minute on a hill far away lives an old rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame and I love that old cross be dearest and
come home come home you who are weary come home earnestly tenderly Jesus is calling calling us sinners come home softly and tenderly Jesus is calling calling for you and for me see on the portals he's waiting and watching watching Tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling no sinner, come and pray find in me thine all in all cause Jesus paid it all all to him I owe sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white as snow Lord now change the leopard spots and melt the heart of stone because Jesus paid it all all to him I owe sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white as snow and when the throne I stand in him complete Jesus died my soul to save my lips shall still repeat Jesus paid it all all to him I owe sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white as snow washed it white as snow. Praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead. Praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Jesus did pay it all. I said Jesus did pay it all. And all to him 
I owe. I like this part. Donnie, sin had left a crimson stain. Me. But he washed it white as snow. Today I can only stand before you and even declare the word of God to you because I'm covered in the blood of the Lamb. That's it. The only reason any of us will ever go to heaven is because of the good news that we celebrate today that Jesus did die, but he rose again. And we serve a risen Savior. How exciting that is. Thank you for being here today. What a great, what a great day. In John chapter 20, I'm going to read some scriptures to you. It says, now Thomas, that's in verse 24, he was actually called the twin. He was one of the 12 disciples and was not with them when Jesus came and appeared after he had risen out of the tomb. And the other disciples therefore said to him, we have seen the Lord. So he said to them, lest I see his hands and the print of the nails and put my finger in to the print of the nails and put my hand to his side where they stabbed him with the spear, I will not believe. Let me confess to you this morning, had I seen my Jesus go through on the cross of Calvary, what Jesus went through, and had I seen them put him in the tomb, I'd have been this brother if I heard that rumor. I'd be, I have to see that for myself. And it says, so he said to them, lest I see his hands. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, and the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, peace be unto you. Then he said, Thomas, reach your fingers here, and look at my hands. Reach your hand here, and put it to my side, and... Thomas, do not be unbelieving, but Thomas believed. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. But Jesus gives you and I a message thousands of years later in 2019. And he says, but blessed are those who have not seen, and yet we believe. Give honor to glory to the Lord. <laughs> Verse 30 says this, And truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not even written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and that believing you may have life. In his name, church, say amen. amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Father, we celebrate a risen Savior. Father, we celebrate an empty tomb. Father, we celebrate the fact that we know you today and that you're alive and well. Father, bless us now for just a few moments. May your Holy Spirit come into this place and speak to hearts and lives, starting with mine. And all the church said amen. It is so good to have you. Man, wasn't that some great singing? Amen. Amen. One person clapped. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> you know, all of us have heard little Johnny jokes forever. Most little Johnny jokes you can't even tell in church. Can I get an amen? <laughs> See, you laugh because you know those jokes. But I have heard the most awesome, finally little Johnny comes around and finally says something spectacular. And I heard this, I've got to share it with you, it was just too funny. There was this teacher that was in class. Do I have any school teachers here or former school teachers? Amen. So a teacher's in the classroom and she says, class, I want to ask you, what is Easter? And the man, everybody's raising their hand and little Johnny's in the back. Man, he's just waving it bigger than anybody. She's like, I cannot call on little Johnny. There it is. He's going to say something nasty. He's going to say something not right. I'm, not, I'm just going to act like I don't even see little Johnny waving his hands. There's several people waving their hands. And she calls on, on Susie there, and the, the first student. And she says, that's easy. It's the holiday in November when everybody gets together and eats turkey and, and says something that they're thankful for. And 
Oh, man, the teacher just ducks her head. She's like, no, that's not it. She goes, class, what is Easter? And a few more hands go up. Man, still little Johnny's in the back, you know, just so excited. She says, I'm not calling on little, Aunt, on, on, on little Johnny. And so she called on the second student and said, well, what is Easter? And they said, well, that's the holiday in December when we put a nice tree up and exchange presents and celebrate the birth of, of our Jesus. And, oh, man, she just can't believe nobody can get this right. Nobody understands what Easter is. And finally she goes, what is Easter? And, man, there ain't nobody raising her hand, but little Johnny's in the back, man, just raising his hand. So finally she thinks, I know I ought not do this. Lord have mercy. She goes, all right, little Johnny, what is Easter? Little Johnny said, well, Easter is the Christian holiday that coincides with the Jewish celebration over Passover. Jesus and his disciples were eating at the Last Supper, and later he was even betrayed and deceived, and he was turned over to the Romans by one of his disciples. The Romans took him to be crucified and was hung on a cross. He was buried in a nearby cave and was sealed off after putting a spear in his side and a crown of thorns upon his head. And he hung there on that cross and he died. And they put him in a tomb and they rolled a large boulder in front of that tomb. And man, this teacher is standing there astonished and little Johnny sits right back down. She says, little Johnny, I can't believe that you've expounded on this in such a great way. And about that time, he stood up and said, well, that's not all. And she goes, well, that's right, Johnny. That's not all. What else? Says, well, Jesus, three days later, came out of the tomb. And man, her heart's just swelling, swelling with pride. And he says, and he saw his shadow, and they knew there'd be six more weeks of winter. <laughs> yeah. Little Johnny. <laughs> He's going to mess it up, isn't he? Well, might I share with you today... <laughs> If you're here, may I share with you that Jesus rose again the third day and he lives forever. Amen. Amen. What great news. What great news. Today I want to talk to you about something that maybe surprised you. It's going to be a little different. I know that if you've come Sunday after Sunday after Sunday or year after year, I should say, for Easter, and you think, well, we're going to hear a sermon about the resurrection. And we are, but it's going to be maybe a little different with a twist this year. And what I'm going to tell you is that we're going to be talking about God's chuck wagon god's chuck wagon man about two sundays ago we have three maybe now two or three sundays ago we had a a, a sunday fun day at lion camp cowboy church and our chuck wagon team knocked it out of the park amen give the hand give a hand praise for gluttony these two guys right here amen our chuck wagon team knocked it out of the park may i say to you today that we're a young church and there's some things we're having to learn and and we're learning by some some bruises and some steps that we take but i'm going to tell you straight up if there's one thing that lion camp cowboy church knows how to do we know how to eat by golly it's no doubt <laughs> so today i want to talk to you about god's chuck wagon what I mean by that is this, is today I could tell you about a risen Savior, and I believe most of you would believe it or you wouldn't be here, amen. I could tell you that Jesus died on the cross, and I think most of you believe that or you wouldn't be here today. And we could talk about that he was, he was buried, and, and I could go into so much doctrine and theology for you, but it's very important to me today that, is that you not just hear that story again, but you're able to leave here and know what it means to you, what it offers you. And so I want to give you that. Today, I feel that, that most of us uh, w would agree that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. He was buried and was, was risen again, sits on the right-hand throne of the Father. And if you and I will accept him as our personal Lord and Savior and believe on him, and we make him the Lord and Master of our life, he says you'll have everlasting life. Well, what does this resurrection mean to you and I? I want to give it to you like this. We have a lot of food that we eat when we go to a buffet. But on God's buffet, and this is what the cross offered you today, the cross offers you a buffet, and on that menu of buffet is love, say love. love. And on that buffet is grace, say grace. And on that buffet is mercy, say mercy. And so I want to give you something real hurriedly about that buffet. Number one, when Dee and I go to eat somewhere, and we'll eat uh, often at what they call Mama Jack's in Coots, and uh, let me say, that way in case she watches this, I might get a little something-something off my bill next time. Mama Jack's and Coots is a wonderful place to eat, and all of you should try it. And so, uh, a lot of the times you go and you sit down, and on a buffet, you don't have somebody that waits on you. You wait on yourself. 
We're going to speak a lot of metaphors today. I want, to, I want you to know that Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary for you. And he offers you everlasting life. But he's not going to offer you any more than that. It's going to be up to you to step up to the buffet and serve yourself. When we go to a buffet, we serve ourselves. So I want you to understand when it comes to love, when it comes to grace, when it comes to mercy, you've got to step up to the plate and receive what Jesus has for you. The Bible says, if any man wants to be my disciple, if any man wants to be my disciple, let him step up. Or if you would, let him deny himself, step up, take up his cross daily, step up and follow me. You and I have to step up when it comes to God's love and salvation God's not going to force it on you it's something that I'm going to it's been already been offered to me and it's there if I'll just step up and receive it the Bible says that with the heart man believes unto salvation with the heart man believes unto salvation and with the mouth confession or with the heart I'm sorry man believes unto righteousness with the heart man believes unto righteousness but with a mouth confession is made unto salvation let me help you with that verse of scripture real quick I believe that there's a lot of people in the world today that have done part one or part two of that without trying to do part one. And let me give you this. The word, say the word righteousness. The word righteousness means, just means right living. I'm going to break it down for you even better than that. Right living means that I'm going to do the best I can to do the best I can of how God wants me to live the best I can. But it won't be his best until I see him face to face. Amen. Don't ask me to repeat that twice. But what I'm telling you is I come to the place that in my heart, I know I'm not living right. I come to the place in my heart. So with a heart, man believes unto righteousness. And, and, and watch, I'm believing now. I'm going to continue to believe. And then one day when I see him face to face, I will finally believe. Amen? Amen. And so it's a progression for me. I want you to know you'll never be good enough to be baptized. You'll never be good enough to come to Jesus. What I've got to do is come to Jesus just like I am, believing that I'm going to do my best to live like he's asked me to. Lord, with your help, Lord, with your help, I'm going to live the best I can like you want me to live if you'll but guide me. So it's with a heart we believe unto right living and then with a mouth confession is made unto salvation i'm afraid a lot of people have made a, a mouth confession but never repented in their heart amen amen and so you and i have to step up to the buffet of the lord then i'm going to tell you number two and this works at lion camp a lot you need to come hungry let me say it like i really want to you need to come hungry <laughs> all right you need to come hungry. When you come to the Lord, I want you to know you need to be come to him wanting and desiring more than what you've got right now. The Bible says this, blessed is the man that hunger and thirsts after righteousness. Blessed is the man that hunger and thirsts after righteousness. And here's the, the promise that you and I have. If you and I will step, but, but step up to the buffet, if we will but come hungry for what God wants for us, the Bible says that he shall be filled. Church, say amen. Isn't that a wonderful promise? Because of the cross of Calvary today, because of the cross of Calvary today, I have a love and a grace and a mercy that is mine for the taking, but I need to come hungering and thirsting. Not only do you have to step up to the buffet, number two, not only do you have to be hungry, but number three, there's this, there's no limit on how many times I can go back. I'm so glad that when I told the Lord I was sorry and confessed my sins, that if I ever sinned again, I'm glad I have an opportunity to go back and say, well, Lord, I messed up again. I ask you to forgive me again. Amen? There is no, there is no. Now, look, we're not talking about our Hardin County and Liberty County friends <laughs> that mess up one time and we go, that's it. That's it. I'm glad to know. That with a heart that's seeking righteousness and a mouth that's conf made confession to Jesus Christ, that the cross offered me this opportunity and sincere repentance that I could go to my Lord and Savior every time that I fail him. The Bible says that he will welcome me with welcome arms. Now, here's what I love about this. Now, Dee and I have been married. I kept saying 37 years. And the other day she goes, you know, you need to correct that. It's been 39 years now. <laughs> Who's counting, right? Amen. <laughs> but, but listen to me. I've shared this with y'all before. Dee and I were dating. I started dating her when she was 16 years old. <laughs> Dee and 
There are some things in 40 years that I've done that she's not real happy about. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you. One of them was when she was 16 years old and we were dating. And there was this girl and we had a church activity where we all loaded up in the individual cars and we went to the roller skating rink in Beaumont. And on the roller skating rink, and we was going steady like she had my ring on. <laughs> we got aggravated. She got aggravated over nothing. <laughs> All I did was roller skate on the couple's song where they turn the lights out and change the music and do the lights. I roller skated with some other gal. <laughs> it wasn't a big deal. <laughs> oh, yes, it was. <laughs> And what I'll tell you is 40 years later, <laughs> she still reminds me of it. <laughs> you and I can accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and be baptized. And what I, I want you to understand this. It doesn't give us a permission to sin, but we're still going to fail him from time to time. We can go to Jesus and we say, Lord, I'm really sorry. I had no business roller skating with that other chick. <laughs> Lord, I'm sorry for, and you say whatever yours is. The Bible says, and this is what the cross offers you and I. The Bible says if you're willing and just to confess your sins, he's willing and just to forgive you of your sins and to cast them as far as the east is from the west to remember them no more. <laughs> That's what the cross brings you and I. So we've got to step up. We've got to come hungry. And we need to understand there's no limits to how many times that you have to, that you can come back for more. In fact, you know the psalmist David, if you turn in your book, in your Bibles, the book of Psalms, David, David has a verse of scripture that, that says, have mercy on me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. Blot out my transgressions before me. The Bible says that, that he did, and he continued to use David. And David, even after committing murder, David, even after committing adultery, David, even after lying, ended up putting one of the books of the Bible in the Holy Word. Amen. God is a God that's willing to forgive you today if you're willing to come to the buffet of forgiveness. God is willing to come to you today with love. I can't have an Easter message that I don't tell you that John 3, 16 says that for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. When my buddy old Drew Galloway sank below those waters on Rayburn this week. The Bible says that the moment that he closed his eyes in death, he opened his eyes in glory with Jesus because he believed that for God so loved the world. And he had accepted that Jesus as his personal Savior. We have God's love, and I believe we understand God's love. I'm going to tell you that God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son for you and I. And we have God's grace for the Bible says, for by grace are you saved. It's not through yourself. It's not anything you can do. But it's the gift of God, which is eternal life, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we have his mercy. Many people have said, what is it? What's the difference between God's grace and, and God's mercy? Let me see if I can say it right. Grace is that God loves us enough that he gives us something that we do not deserve. Mercy is that something that he loves us enough that he doesn't give us what we do deserve. The resurrection, the Savior. I want to talk to you about this last thing as the band comes forward. And it's the fourth and final thing is not only do you have to step up to the buffet, 
Not only do you need to come hungry, and not only is there no limit on how many times you can come back for more, and not only all of that, but today this buffet, it's not free. The buffet is not free, but Jesus paid it forward. Church, say amen. amen. Jesus Christ paid it forward. He gave his life on Calvary for you and I. Jesus has already paid the price for your sin. He's already paid the price for your sin.